welcome today we will talk about a very interesting concept and that is cell our human body or any organism is composed of trillions of cell when i say trillion it is thousand billion and one billion is a thousand million so you can understand the extent or the number of cells through which our body is composed of now uh, there are various kind of organisms some organisms are unicellular that means they have a single cell for example amoeba paramecium uh, all the functions of uh, production excretion digestion respiration are taken by a single cell so they are single cellular on the other hand we have multicellular organisms where specialized cell perform specialized works so here are some of the brain teasers for you if you are able to solve those you are all set with the chapter else let's start with the very basics now cell is a very structural unit of an organ this cell is equivalent to or comparable to a brick now brick is used as a building material for construction similarly cell is a building material for an organism so you have the cells which are assembled in a body of each and every organism usually the structure of cell or the arrangement of cell we say is a honeycomb structure that is seen and this cell was first observed in the cork and cork was obtained from the bark of a tree uh, this cork was seen back in 1665 by robert hook so robert hook when he observed the cork cell uh, these cells were actually dead cells and he could uh, observe only minute traces of those later on nearly 150 years later after he discovered that there were very good mechanisms to observe the cells very microscopically with higher magnification that was seen and therefore you had huge varieties of microscopes that were developed which could go into very minute details with a very good magnification so microscope is an instrument which is used to see minute organisms or minute particles that are present or a smaller cell that could be seen so as i said cell is a very basic structural unit there are various arrangement and combinations of cell uh, the cells vary in shape size and color so different cell have different uh, purpose that could be seen some of the cells are very very small they are micrometers so 0.1 micrometer 0.5 micrometer and therefore we use microscope to see those now again those cells are not directly visible so what i need to put is some dye or stain so when we put some stain or dye uh, because of those you have the color of the cells that are seen and therefore those cells become very very obvious under a microscope on the other hand there are cells which could be seen by a normal eye or any unaided eye we say that is we don't require any microscope to so see the, that for example egg of a ostrich or egg of a hen so that's again a cell now egg is unique uh, you have a egg shell with which has the white part which is known as albumin and the center part which is the yellow part which is known as egg yolk so albumin and egg yolk and that's which is one cell which is considered as a single cell unicellular organisms we already said amoeba paramecium usulina is a good example when i say amoeba it's unique because amoeba does not have a defined shape it has pseudopodia so all of those are pseudopodia pseudo means false so these are considered as false like and these keep on changing their shape so amoeba keeps on changing its shape amoeba reproduces by binary fission which we will understand in our later classes on uh, reproduction of a unicellular uh, organism or a asexual organism that next is multicellular when i say multicellular you have a specialized cells that are present so specialized cells for blood specialized cells for muscles specialized cells for nerves that are present and their arrangement again is very very important to understand so we have rbcs which are spherical in shape so as you can see rbc here are spherical in shape you have muscle cells which are spindle shape you have nerve cells which are elongated cells so those are different types of cells that are seen different shapes that are seen as i said 
Amoeba does not have any shape. It has pseudopodia that appears and disappears as it moves and feeds. So you have the amoeba that moves and captures the food particle, changes its shapes. Then you have WBC which also changes the shape similar to an amoeba. But amoeba is a full-fledged organism. WBC is not a full-fledged organism. So that's the difference that we need to understand. Uh, also, all the components of cell are enclosed in a cell membrane. So within a cell membrane, we can say there is nucleus and cytoplasm. Cytoplasm is the jelly-like substance that fills up the space. Within the cytoplasm, there are numerous organelles that are present. These could be in the form of Golgi bodies, mitochondria, ribosomes, and then you have a nucleus. This nucleus is important because it's a center for inheritance. It's not just a center for inheritance, but it is also a control center which controls all the activities of the cell. This nucleus is surrounded by a membrane which is known as nuclear membrane. Similar to the cell which is surrounded by a membrane which is known as cell membrane. Now this cell membrane is permeable. That means there is exchange of things which takes place from outside. Between the two cells that is present there is a medium. And this medium helps to uh, exchange the things that are there. So that's another important aspect that we need to understand. A very important concept that we would come up here is the size of the cell has no relation to the actual size of a body. You have an elephant which is huge, a rat which is small. Both of them have a nerve cell with a function of coordination and control that is present. All the nerve cells, be it an elephant or be it a rat, are long and branched. So they perform the same function of transferring the message. But it's not that the size of the cell would be bigger in a case of elephant as compared to a rat. So uh, the size of a cell has no relation to the size of the body of an actual animal that is present. Okay, now there are various things that have specialized roles. For example, roots help in absorption of water. Leaves helps in the process of photosynthesis. So each organism, be it a plant or be it a human being, have specialized roles that are present. So as I said, cytoplasm has numerous organelles within the jelly-like substance that is there and the nucleus. This nucleus again has a center which is known as nucleolus. Uh, within the nucleus, you have chromosomes. Chromosomes have the genes and these genes are responsible for carrying the genetic information or the heredity information that is present. A very good example to experiment by yourself is a cheek cell. So you can just take a toothpick and take a sample of your cheek cell. You can stain it with iodine and methylene blue and then look under a microscope. What you would see would be a structure something like this. And this is what is a structure of the cells present in the cheek cell of a human being. Now as you can see, you just have a cell membrane. There is no cell wall. Cell wall is absent in animal cell. Cell wall is only present in the plant cells. Why it is present in the plant cell is important. It is mainly for the protection of the plants. Plants cannot physically move from one location to another. So there, if there is a variation in a temperature, speed, uh, wind, moisture conditions, humidity conditions, what a plant need is a protection. And this protection could be obtained through the cell wall, which gives it a shape and a rigid structure. So that is something that is very, very important to understand. The next important thing to understand is the nucleus along with the cytoplasm together constitutes the protoplasm. Protoplasm is known as the living substance of the cell. That is very important. Now, each of the cells, be it a plant cell or an animal cell, has vacuoles. Vacuoles is the empty space that is present. So in plant cell, there is one big vacuole. In uh, animal cells, there are numerous small vacuoles. Since in the plant cell, there is one big vacuole, what would happen is, this big vacuole would give a shift to the nucleus on one side. So in a plant cell, nucleus is present on one side. However, under an animal cell, which is irregular in shape, you have nucleus moreover in the center and you have numerous vacuoles that are present, which are smaller in size. Again, 
Since the plant has a cell wall, it is rectangular in shape more or less. Animal cell is more or less circular in shape. Uh, the rectangular shape is maintained due to the cell wall. It maintains the shape and the rigidity that is there. Again, one very important term is prokaryoids and eukaryoids. Prokaryoids do not have a well-organized nucleus. However, eukaryoids have a well-organized nucleus. Example of prokaryoid are bacteria, blue-green algae. So these do not have a well-defined, well-organized nucleus that is present. But yes, the eukaryoids have a well-defined nucleus that is present. Again, uh, the plant cell have plastids. Chloroplast is one good example. The, this has uh, green color which is chlorophyll and this provides the green color to the leaves. So the pigment that gives green color to the leaves is through the chloroplast and these chloroplast or the plastids are present in plant cell. They are absent in animal cell. Animal cell uh, you have uh, flagellas that are present however cilia that is present however that is absent in a plant cell. Uh, if put in a hypertonic or a hypotonic solution, the animal cell retain, uh, does not retain its shapes. It bursts because it does not have a cell wall. However, plant cell does not burst because it has a cell wall. So that's again a very interesting study that we do here. A very interesting fact for you is about the skin. Now the outermost or the topmost layer of the skin is dead. We, it's believed that we carry nearly 2 kg of dead skin every day and even if you wipe your finger uh, to remove the dust, in that process you shed out numerous millions of uh, dead cells that are there and that's how we understand that the topmost layer of the skin which is considered as dead cell does not have nerve cells and therefore you don't uh, have a sensation over there. Similarly, when you are cutting your nails, those are dead cells. So they do not have nerve cells and therefore you do not have a pain sensation. The pain sensation comes only when the contact skin gets hurt or uh, there is an injury to the neighboring areas. The next important thing that we understand is the storage. So in plant cell, you have starch as the storage. However, in animal cell, glycogen is the storage. Plant can synthesize their nutrients by themselves. Animal cells cannot synthesize their nutrients by themselves themselves. So those are some of the most important differences that we see. Uh, the number of mitochondria present in plant cells are less as compared to animal cell. Similarly, the lysosomes are rarely noticed in plant cell but the, yes they are seen in animal cells and they are also called as suicidal bags. So those are some of the important differences that we have seen between the plant cell and the animal cell. We will be bringing in many important lectures for you, the very important components of cell. So stay tuned for further lectures, stay subscribed, have a wonderful day ahead.